welcome to it. This is the biggest sport outlet in Southern Africa. There is nothing bigger than uh, Sports Start Amplified with Andile. And to that, we say thank you to every single one of you who every day joins this uh, uh, regime. Yamapara. Today, Harbu Yamapara. Hey, I've got uh, the biggest Lepara to ever walk into the studio. Really appreciate him uh, coming in today because today we'll be telling the story uh, that you might not know. Many of us. Uh, I mean, Metro FM was down at the July. So many of you, I see you on Instagram, you're down at the July to, you know, have a bit of a, a drink, uh, dress up nicely and enjoy the atmosphere. But do you ever think about everything else at the July? The horses that you're watching, who owns them? What is the history behind them? Do, do people like you sit in the owner's boxes? Are they black people that sit in those owner's boxes? What does it take to be at the July as a black person? and sit in the owner's box, in the owner's suite. Hmm? Last week, we told the very sad yet amazing story of uh, Lebohang Manyama, his retirement due to a misdiagnosis of doctors left, right and centre, and eventually the injury that led to him saying goodbye to his game. Today, it's a little bit different, ladies and gentlemen. We have to leave all of that behind and speak to Prasam, the Tepo. Prasam? Are you well? No, I'm fine. How are you? I hear that's not what they call you, though. I hear uh, they call you something different. What do they call you? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 no, that's my real name. Is that your real name? Yeah. is a nickname. Stinky is your real name? That's my real name. It's an African's name. Actually, by pronouns are not correctly. The correct pronouncement is Stienki. Oh, Stienki. That's a small, nice diamond. The new one is Stienki. Exactly. Ah, 15 after the hour six. Oh, here's my guest, ladies and gentlemen, Sam Stienki Poe. So, for many listening now, they're like, hey, Andile, what is this? Who are you talking to there? He is one of the best dressed people I've seen in a very long time. I think get lots of someone a little bit better, you know, that, that you must always look good. But while you were enjoying yourself at the July, you were sitting in the owner's box. Yes. Why are you sitting in the owner's box? When you've got a, a runner in a July handicap, you get a special tr- treatment, unfortunately, unfortunately. <laughs> so you had a horse that was running at the July? My horse was running at the July. How many people that look like you? Black people, Tswana people, Zulu people, Tosa people, uh, Tsonga people? Uh, have the honor of sitting alongside you there? There are black owners in, in horse racing, but uh, fortunately I became the first black man to have a horse in, in a July handicap. Oh, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, and that's the point I was getting to. Sitting with us here is the first black man to have a horse run at the Durban July. I want to get to that, because we're starting where we're going to end it. I want to get to a, a young man with an Afrikaans name growing up. Where do you come across horses even? It's it, a uh, long story. You remember, I think I, I had an interview with Kozi. I heard week. it, yeah. They asked me the same question. It was so simple. You know, we had no opportunities, toys to play with when we grew up during those uh, bad days of South Africa. So fortunately, there were old men who used to have horses. Over the weekends, they will ra- run a uh, horse racing, not formally. So we used to, to go there and, and become spectators. Wait, so, so the way is this? Where did you grow up? In Nigel, in Chatterston. Oh, OK. Location. Yeah. It is a farm town. Yeah, also. it's a farm community, yeah. Yeah. It was not a big uh, township, a very small township, but the uh, activities of horsing. Now, Stinky makes sense now, all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> when you put it to respect where you grew up. So there you are, a young man growing up there. Horses are a mode of transportation, I'm assuming. Yeah. They weren't there for leisure. Leisure, cows, uh, you name it. It it was, it was a farm town, to be honest mm. with you. Yeah. Of course, it was surrounded by farms, millies, and all that. So it all started there. Then when we were young, we used to imitate their horses. 
if you can run and beat everybody, you become the best horse because you put some that looks like those horse things. Then we'll, we'll make a competition, run, you win, you become the best. That's how we started, and I have love for horses. It all started there. And besides uh, the horses, you remember, I, I don't think this thing they do happen these days at schools. We were, we had those things they were called scouts. Mm. Yeah, sometimes you go and camp, sleep there for a weekend. That's where we were taught about animals, to have love for animals, irrespective of whether they are horse, dogs, anything. So that's how we started. Uh, I had love. Did you have horses at home? No, nothing. They could not even afford it, unfortunately. How much are horses back then? People who had horses were people who had some money, maybe some they were selling like coal, wood. It was not everybody who can afford a, a horse by then. So when did you get onto your first horse? I got to my first horse, I think, during 80s, if I'm not mistaken. Because uh, I used to be a panther, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Then I, I used to win some very big money on pick six. Okay, hopefully pick six. How about a pick six? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, at some stage, I think I, I I had a video that was taken of me unaware in Newmarket by the guy. I think he, this guy he stays in Tembisa. Mm. The song is called Kijua Gidi Pere. So the song was called Kijua Gidi Pere. Kijua Gidi Pere. No, no socks. Oh, who's this guy? Kim Lebala. Because I remember Tembisa had socks. Um, oh. What was the guy, other guy's name? Let the hood go on. Cat, 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 something. Okay, I'll remember. Yeah. I'll remember. So if you look at that video. You're in the music video. Anaway. Nothing. I'm still looking for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> for compensation. <laughs> <laughs> so from being a panther, do you, do you ever fall in, in love with it to an extent where you're riding horses? Was that ever a thing? Unfortunately, my weight and age could not allow me. Then uh, I won those pick sixes. Then I had some money. Then I said, let me just go step ahead. I got involved with uh, some stables, where Alexander and all that. I put some small shares on the horses. Mm. But unfortunately, we didn't do well. Then I gave up. I tried later again. It didn't work out. Then I said, no, let me get out of this and concentrate on what I'm doing. Then uh, I think uh, last year, I had a friend who works at, uh, at the horses. Then he called me and said, there's a black guy who just got his uh, training license. Can you please come and help? I said, who's the guy? He told me the name and uh, I knew the guy. I said, okay, as long as he's black, mm. I will help him. That's exactly what I did. I think if I remember, I bought him about six or seven, eight horses on the first sale. Six or seven? Do horses, are you, horses are sold out at auctions? Or do you go to, are there, are there, are there people that um, farm horses? How, how, do, how do you buy a horse? There are auctions sometimes online, but uh, there are sales. When, when uh, all the breeders, like Aka sales, all the breeders all over the country, they bring their horses here. Uh, at Coswold Park. Okay. Yeah. Then they go for... These are horses that are eligible like race horses. Thoroughbred race horses. Thoroughbred race horses. Uh, How much is a horse? What, what, what is the minimum? What is the maximum? If you're spending, you know, if you're starting out and versus if you've got all the money, what, 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 how much do horses go for? The sales, they differ from one to another. But uh, there are these sales where you might get get away with something 15,000, 20,000. Oh, is it? That's not yeah. bad. No, it, it doesn't end there. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I'm thinking 15,000, uh, I can uh, buy a horse. Up to a million, two million, three million, five million. What's the difference between a horse, yeah, 15,000, yeah, two million? If Kiri Beile, Mokere, there it is, there it is. What's the difference between those two horses? No, they look alike, but the breeding part of it, that's where the whole thing comes in. 
Because now it's legs of thunder. I'm legs of thunder. Yeah. Legs of thunder. Na na koka asa jadi keep keep. You know, and I wonder is is that what it is? Is it diet? How you fed it all along? It, does that all contribute towards the price? We're speaking a little bit earlier with touch about wagyu beef, for instance. You know, that's that cow that's grown in Japan, and we're told it's got a special diet. Therefore, the meat is more tender, it's more delicious, it's more marbled. Is it the same here? That's the same with the horses. And it depends the breeder, the father, the mother, the grandmother, the grandfather. You follow the history. <laughs> so when they sell you the horse, they give you the history of the horse? They give you the, the history of the horse, then you decide on your own. But sometimes, and luck as well, it works. Because there's a horse that uh, when I, I bought horses for this guy, I bought that horse for 40,000 rand. Mm -hmm. It's called Miss Daisy. The horse is called Miss Daisy. He's, okay. one, he's one of the best horses in, in the country at, at this moment. That's not the horse that was at the July though, no? No, that's not the one. Because that was second base. The one in July to a second base, we bought it uh, online. It was owned by a very popular owner. I don't know why they decided to sell it. Then my trainer, uh, Klassen, called me. I was in Devon. said that there's a horse that uh, is for sale there. I think this horse can can run for us in July. I said, why do you think about it? I said, no, the pedigree, the father, uh, it lost form. Maybe that's why the owner is selling it. Or the mm. trainer. Then I said, no, let's go for it. We so it lose, uh, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm going to seem stupid asking you these <laughs> questions, but it's something that I'm genuinely intrigued about. The horse has lost form. Yeah. Like, because, I mean, I, I'm, I love sports, you know, so I know rugby players, cricket players, they go through dips in form. That's exactly the same. Okay. You can be a striker and score goals. Sometimes there are no more goals. Then you can call the names. <laughs> ah, so when the boo boys start going boo, that's when you went and bought it. When they thought, no, this horse is done. It's done. Then I think, uh, I don't say they made a big mistake, but uh, sometimes change of environment can change things for some people. I think that's exactly what happened there. With second base? With second base. Because uh, we bought it, then it went to the lady. As I agreed, he's, she told me straight that uh, we've got a horse. I said, no, I believe in you. I've got confidence in you. We had a horse, I think, for less than a month. There was a big race in, in Tafondane. I think it was a million or two million race, if I, I remember very well. We That's the purse? The, 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 the million, two million is, is the purse? Yeah, yeah, I think it was two million. Okay. That was the stake. Yeah. We nearly won the race at 100 to 1. Hmm. It ran second. They had to go and wash the feeling to get uh, who's actually the winner is. We beat him by 0 0.5. Wow. First race. First time out for us. Then it qualified for July handicap. That's the race that made the horse to go to Devon. I want to know a little bit more, <laughs> especially about how people name their horses, uh, etc. But sitting with us here is a thing of legend. We're celebrating South Africans. We're celebrating greatness. Mr. Poe is stinky. Uh, uh, I'm never going to forget it now. Like uh, I'm going to look for that name to see if it's unique to you, to see if anybody else has a very similar name to that because it sounds very unique. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue with the story of a black man who raced at the July. It's 28 up to the R6 in the mighty Metro FM. Uh, we've taken a different uh, approach this Thursday and throwback. We're throwing it back to the history of the first black South African to own a horse at the July Handicap. He's sitting with me now. He is uh, one of the best dressed people I've seen in a very long time. You look sharp, by the way. I wonder, is is, <laughs> is is the style by any way influenced by the environment, you know, horses, etc.? Because, I mean, you know, though there's a very specific trend of dressing in that community. No, I don't think so, because I, I grew up like this. I'm a smart dresser from an early, early age. <laughs> you go to watch John Craig, Textiles, you'll find me there those days. <laughs> Back in those days, because <laughs> John days. Craig was there. <laughs> that was the best by then. All right, let's get yeah. back to the horses. You, you, you've you got all these horses, and I, I, one thing that came to mind is you buy second base from someone else. 
Do they give you the name with it when you buy it? No, it came with the name. So you can't change the horse's name? You can um, apply to change the name, but I think uh, because the horse has made it its own history, mm. I don't see any purpose of changing the name. And the rest of the horses that you buy, um, do you buy them all with the name? Do they come named or are they some that you name yourself? Or is that a breeder's um, a privilege then to say, I'm going to, you know, because I'm breeding it from when it's small, give it a name. How do the naming, because I mean, you, horses have some of the best names. I mean, you, mm. Miss Daisy, for instance, that you were talking about. No, most of them, they, they come with the names f from the... From the breeders. From the breeders. But some, what they do, they may, they give a horse the name of the father or the mother. Okay. Then you you have to rename the horse. Have you renamed some horses? Yes, I did. What are some of the names you've given your horses? I had a horse uh, that I changed name to Mapule. <laughs> <laughs> Why Mapule? And unfortunately... The, ho the horse had colic, then it died. Oh, why Mapule? It's so, like, mm -hmm. I've never heard of a black name on a horse. I love it. It's my daughter. You named it after your daughter? Yes. That is so beautiful. Then I think we've got one that is, yeah, we've got one that is racing on on Saturday, Tafuntain first race. What is it called? MK's Dream. So, MK's Dream? Yeah. There's a, a part of mine. I own 50%. Mr. Ngale owns 50%. He's got a horse by the name of MK's Pride. Okay. Then he wanted to give, because this we needed to rename it, as I explained. So we decided to remake. Let's keep the MK, because the MK's Pride is doing good for him. Then we decided that it looks like the MK name is it, it, got good news. No, but we, we must go find another Mapule. <laughs> I like Mapule. <laughs> we must go find another mm -hmm. Mapule. Uh, I, I don't think we'll be able to rename the other horse Mapule because it's already in the system. Ah. But uh, I, I might, uh, I'll find out about it. No, please do. I like yeah. that name. I like that name. So there's a... There's a thinking, and I'm hearing you now. I mean, you're talking about 15,000, 40,000, 100,000. It doesn't sound as bad as what w I've been told for the longest time, that owning horses and racing horses is an expensive exercise. Is it an mm. expensive exercise? It is, because as I, I, I'm explaining, you need to be very, very lucky to buy a horse for 40,000, then it becomes a good horse. Mm. Because uh, the big guns... They go for three million, two million, two hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. And that's just for the purchase. Just for the purchase. And the upkeep? It starts from eight thousand, ten thousand, someday up to fifteen thousand per month per horse. Ten to fifteen thousand per month per horse. Per horse. Yes. How many horses do you have? Because I'm doing maths in my head. I've got about thirty. <sighs> but uh, if you get a cheaper trainer it exclude uh, the vet expense yeah you that is um that is something else uh, i'm doing uh, no wonder it's it's known as an expensive exercise then because not many people can be able to afford the upkeep even those that can perhaps maybe buy the horses so now there you are you're a black man who owns a horses that's at the july you're the first that's ever done it you have written your name, your family name, into the history of South African racing. Talk to me about the day when your horse lined up at the July. Second base. I think uh, I had a wish. And I believed myself that one day I'll have one, but it came too quick. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it because uh, I still got some younger horses that uh, I, I thought they'll make it to that uh, standard. You're still level. grooming them to get there? To get there. Because I, I, I bought some expensive ho horses recently. As I say, you have to start somewhere. Mm. And it does not mean you need to have all those monies to have a, a racehorse. There are ways of getting into this industry in a form of syndicates. For instance, if you buy a horse for 40000 there's five of you. And the trainer asked ten thousand per month. You divide ten thousand by five, mm. it's two thousand. If you are twenty, it's one thousand. Mm. 
There are, there are many ways to kill a cat and get people involved until you become financially stable. It's all about, but anyway, you need to start somewhere. Yeah. Nobody grew up with all the money in his body. <laughs> you need to work hard, focus. It's part of investment, I would say. Because uh, if you look, the same second base is running at the end of the month back in Devon for a two million stake. Hmm. And uh, our chances are very, 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 very high. So it's not just a, a leisurely thing that people love doing. There's actually real money in horse racing the in South Africa. Because, I mean, once you go to um, the Arab countries, I know then, you know, whether it's camel racing or horse racing, the money is ridiculous. But in South Africa, because I can assume that's where your, your, your horse races only in South Africa, or do you cross the borders as well? Is there real money? Can one uh, have, you know, be a millionaire of owning horses in South Africa? There are horses uh, in, from South Africa that went abroad, but it must be a very, very good horse. Because mm. sometimes you get, a, if you got a good horse, uh, those Arab guys, even in England, they give you an offer. Say, can we have this horse? We'll pay you so much. It does happen. What's the most expensive horse you've ever bought? The most uh, expensive horse I've got now, I think I bought it for 500,000. Hmm. I think it's 500,000, 420, 350. Uh, on the 8th of July, w we bought uh, one, w but in partnership with three of us, we bought it for 420,000. Including vet. Wow, the the world of horse racing, one that you and I might not be familiar with, but today we bring it to the fore uh, because we've got a a, a a man that is a history maker, and uh, he made history at the Durban July, as you call it, the July handicap, as those that are in the sport call it. He had a horse called Second Base running in that race. So as you were partying, as you were busy. Uh, listening to great music, a South African black-owned horse ran the July. How did second base do? It ran fifth on the day. <coughs> it earned some money. But I think, uh, as I'm saying, it's, it's racing again at the end of the month. But that's a good result, right? Coming fifth? No, it's a, that's a good result. Because remember, when you nominate a horse it go with cost mm. at least second base has covered our cost so if you if you win from number one to number five what is the owner's share what is the winnings for the owners at the july i think the first price was 1.8 million okay then the second price i think it was 300 and something 200 and something i think with us we got between 150 and 200, I don't remember very well. Which covered your cost to go down there and have to the horse be there? have the horse there. Wow. But it opens. You know, I've been to the July once. I uh, have absolutely no idea of all of this. Yeah. <laughs> it, it opens chances for you. I mean, it ran fifth. Now it's going for a two million race. And there are chances that we might win that race. And it would have paid its money back times. Yeah, th those chances are very high. Does, do the horses stay your horses? Are they kept in Joburg? Second base is kept in Joburg. I've got horses in Joburg. I've got horses in Guazulu Natal. I've got horses in PE. So they travel up and down? No, no, no. I mean, like the second base, for instance. I mean, he's racing in Durban. He's kept in Joburg. Yeah. Does this mean you have to transport him? How, how do Because um, they can't get on a flight. They don't do trains, so you have to drive you, them down. You can put them in a flight uh, if you want or if you afford it. <laughs> So the how much is how much is a horse <laughs> on a flight? I'm not sure. I've never. It's done. an cargo. Yeah, but like it, there's a trainer in Cape Town who, who usually flies his horses to wherever. But uh, they travel with a float those trucks because they need to be driven very slowly. They are very sensitive those horses. They're very sensitive. They're not uh, easy to work with. They don't like noise. That's number one. They get scared very easy. Sometimes you lose a horse during training. Just breaks down, goes through the fence and breaks the legs, then they need to put it down. Those are not good news, but you need to take care of them, give them their space. That's what is happening. 
How long does it take to get them down there? Is it a one-way trip? Do they stop somewhere and take them out of the trailer so they can, I don't know, stretch their legs? No, they can't take them out. They do take a break on the road. I think they take up for six hours. That's not too bad. It's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah. Here's a little bit of commentary. I want to take it back because you wouldn't have been able to necessarily hear it or focus on it. This is some of the uh, commentary that came from the Durban July. Have a listen. Hollywood beds, Durban July, grade one. We have liftoff from the 2,200 meter marker. Winchester Mansion being bustled along early. Then we have second base, Rascalian, 1,000 meters to go. Dave the King, let rip by three. Beard again goes through the inside split. Son of Raj is running on. Look left, see it again. Winchester Mansion and Dave the King. See it again. Hit the front, 150 to go. Winchester Mansion is fighting back. See it again in Winchester Mansion. Eyeball to eyeball. Here it comes. Winchester Mansion. See it again. Bless my stars in behind these. And the champion, do it again. Sneaking in late on. Winchester Mansion. Number four, Cabela Mazzagnoni. Oh, the names. I love it. The names. I absolutely love it. Who are some of the best horses in South Africa right now? See it again. See it again. That was the winner of the last race, yeah? No, it The race that we just uh, played now. I think yeah. I heard see it again. No, it, it ran second. It ran second? It was a favorite. Unfortunately, it ran second. I think that's one that we need to beat. At see it again. Day. See it again. I like that name as well. I heard the son of Raj as well. Son of Raj, yeah. It's, it's a tough one. Dana horse is on, he's trained by Maui. I've got horses with Maui as well. But he... If you listen to this commentary, there was no mention of second base. It was only mentioned once. Mm. But it flew from the back to run fifth. That's why I'm saying at the end of the month. You're taking it. It's going to be a different story. <laughs> second base is, uh, if you didn't know any horses in South Africa, now you've got a favorite horse. Its name is Second Base, and the owner of that horse uh, Mr. Stienke uh, Sempore is with us in studio. He's a South African horse owner and his horse finished fifth at the July Handicap while you were busy partying. And, and we thought, hey man, let's look at the other side. If there's a black man who's going to be the first one to do it. Did you know that you're the first black man? When did you find mm -hmm. out that no other black man or black person has ever owned a horse that ran the Handicap? I follow history. Uh, as I'm saying, the first black man, there is a a guy of color who had a horse and, and, and won the July. Mm. Yeah. But uh, I would say 100% black. <laughs> I'm the first one. I mean, that must have been a proud moment, though, to just have him, whether he came fifth or sixth, just to have him there must have been a proud moment. It was an honor. Just to have it there is not an easy road. To be honest with you, it's not easy. It sounds like, you know, owning a soccer team that uh, doesn't have sponsors. It sounds like, you know, for a very long time, uh, the best part of it, you're putting money in rather than getting money out. Yeah, at this moment. But uh, I'm telling you, f from next year going forward, because I, I, I've got very nice babies. Yeah. In training. How old, how old is a horse when it's, when it's ready? What are the what are the ages range from? We buy them from the age of eighteen two years. Then there's races for two year olds, three year olds. Sometimes become a champion at a two year champion at a three year old. Some they race up to like do it again. I think it's eight years. And that's normally retirement age. No, it's not normal. When when, when is retirement age? Yeah, about six years. So eight is. Yeah, but but the horse is good. Yeah. <laughs> the horse is good that's a very short lifespan though for, for 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 the races you have to get the best out of it in five years yeah but remember there's in a week there's two to three races oh really that often yeah so if you've got a good horse definitely you'll get your money back plus the profit I want to play you a message because there's a lot of people that are proud of you there's a lot of people that are uh, feel that you need to be acknowledged in history there's a lot of people that feel that what you did was historical and they want to share in this light with you as we're educating south africans now have a listen to this 
Hi, I'm cool. I wanted to say, as your firstborn son, I'm very proud of you. You know, you've done so much to prove that anything is possible. And with that, we've learned from you. All I want to say to you is, may God keep you for us so that we can make you proud. Because we are a big man. And as strict as you are, we all love you. I pray that God keeps you for us and blesses you more so that your legacy can live on. We will carry it with pride. Thank you for everything. We love you. Thank you. That's a sweet message. It's my, it's my son. Andy. Andy. And what he's saying there is a representation of how they feel about you, but by extension, what many South Africans need to learn and know about you as well. And that's why you're here, because people like you cannot be forgotten into history. That's for sure. And we hear him is talking about being strict. Are you strict? I'm very strict. <laughs> what do you mean? What, what is strict? When somebody's strict, what is strict? You know, you young, youngsters sometimes. <laughs> You think you are, you know better than us. <laughs> that time, me and you look the same age. For all of you that are watching now, uh, you can see this man and I, we look like we could have gone to school together. Then you forget that we went through that. Yeah. But uh, I will tell you, make use of your age while you are still young. Mm. Don't mess up with your age. Make sure that you do the right things when you are young. The rest... They'll happen on their own. You can hear me say, that I'm, very, I'm very strict. He is not like. What do your friends think of you? You know what? Uh, I don't know how to put it. I'm not a man of uh, friends. I'm a man of people. Yeah. yeah because uh, I live with people. I won't say I've got a friend by the name of so and so. Those are the guys uh, whom uh, some are grew, some are very young from my age. But uh, I always socialize with everybody. Well, here's another person that you socialize with who'd like to say something to you. Have a listen. Hi, my name is Ngoli Sichomo Shabalala. I'd like to thank Stinky Poe for the passion that he's got in, the host, in horse racing and the way he keeps it, the spirit of racing in this manner. I said, thank you, thank you very much. I don't know what to say. You are the big man. There's a lot of people that appreciate you, Tete That's Shabalala. He's the one who brought me back to the racing. And said, come back said come back we need a guy like you here it was a place of advantage and privilege a long time ago to be in horses there's black people with money now there's black people that can afford now there's black people that can introduce youngsters into the same sport now mm -hmm. it is no longer a thing of just those that have why is it that we're not seeing more black people in horse racing? As I, I say, we black owners, there's only few of us. Mm. But what I've decided now, because uh, I also do some donation on schools for shoes and all that. So I've spoken to some principals and uh, if they are small guys, because to become a jockey, you need to be small. Mm. Must wear size five. You are eight, size eight, five shoe. Five size shoe. Okay. You mustn't be. So no jockey is gonna foot bigger than size five. Sometimes it does happen, but you only find out the weight. But why size five? They need you as small as as possible you can be. <laughs> <laughs> Remember. <laughs> You can't carry a big weight to be on the horse. Yeah, the lighter the weight, the, the, you know, lighter, the, the quicker it can get as well. Exactly. So all the jockeys, they're all lightweight. So I've made a commitment that uh, I'll go around in schools, black schools, and try and, and get all the lightweight boys to go to the college because it, it, it doesn't cause them anything. 
the college gives them free education on horses. They become apprentices. They give them rights. They grew up in the ranks. You can see the the Kumalas of today, mm. the Muzien of today, where they started. And as a jockey, because I mean, yes, uh, as, a, as, as an owner, you know, depending on how your horses do, there's money in that. Is, is there money that one can live in a comfortable life as a jockey? <laughs> a jockey can live like an owner if he is working hard. Can live like an owner? Yes. So he can be a millionaire? Can be a millionaire. You, you, you must remember what is happening. Every stake that the owner wins, the jockey gets 10%. Oh, really? So and over and above what he's paid, if he wins, yeah. if for all the winnings he gets ten percent, can ten percent of the stake. If he rides, if I'm not mistaken, pay every ride, they get thousand rands. Okay. If he's riding for the whole day, on a online race, he's got nine thousand. So it's a thousand rands a yeah. race. If it's Tuesday, and it's a race, you said uh, d twice a week. Yeah. Uh, no, usually it's, it's three times a week. Three times a week. It's Tuesday. Thursdays and Saturdays. And it's not necessarily one race a day. No. If you happen to ride all the races in a week, how much do you have? It's 27,000. If you win, you've got 10% bonus. What more do you want? Heaven. <laughs> Who's the smallest in our team? Is it Malcolm or Timmy? <laughs> there it is. Our camera crew. We're getting a jockey here. Oh, well, there's money to be made. Yeah. I think of I think of horse racing and horses in particular. Maybe not racing, but horses. And I think of um, Mr. Maponya. Mm -hmm. He owns some horses. And I think of Zola Mahobe. I um, mean, I've read the book. Um, uh, we, we we told the story of Zola Mahobe here. Those are some black owners, but they never got to this level. I know Zola Mahobe when he had horses. I know Mr. Maponya when he had horses. I used to go to the racing. I know them physically. But uh, remember... Oh, I, I want to hear the story, so I don't want it to be cut by the ads <laughs> here because this is an important one. Uh, one of those untold gems. Let's take a break. When we come back, um, we'll go straight into it. Plus, I see one of you, all of you, wanting to talk, so we'll take some of your calls. Right, we're going to be taking your calls uh, in just a bit, but before that, uh, I want to I wanna finish that story. You knew Zola Mahobe when he was racing? Yes. And for no age, a former uh, owner of Sundowns. Former owner of Sundowns. And uh, I think you know what happened to Zola Mahobe. Of course, yes. By the time I think he was about to strike it, then... Uh, That's when the thing unfolded. Then the whole thing unfolded, unfortunately. Yeah. I've got one more message to you, or for you, rather. Um, and I'm told this is one of your favorite people in the world. Have a listen to this. Hi, Dad. Thank you for being the best mother and father to us we love you you mean the world to us we could never ask for a better father and we thank god for your existence and the role that you play in our family we love you so so much congratulations on being the first black man to own a horse that ran the Devon july we love you and we know that you are here for a reason we thank god to keep you for us this is from your daughter and the whole family Mapule, we love you. She's the one. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take some of your calls. Um, I've got uh, Umashimbe. Uh, Mashimbe is out in Hammond Scrum. Mashimbe, welcome. Thank you, thank you, Andile. Yes, sir. We are very proud of the owner that side. Is it Mr. Matabore? It's Mr. Boy, yeah. Mr. Boy, so yes. uh, excuse me for that. Uh, he answered several questions I was going to ask. And uh, I remember I must have interacted with him because I was going everywhere from Matiba Park to all this Gosford Park, no market, and so on. Now, uh, we are happy that uh, at least he has represented us. Even on the day, the whole that one was written by a black jockey, Tabelo Matiniani, Winchester Mansion. Mm. We are proud of that. Now, one question I want to ask him, is it possible, Mr. Boy, that the perception that we hear that a jockey can uh, hold a horse and deny it a winning chance? Hmm. I, I'll leave it to other callers. Is it possible? Because some people are, hey, wait, 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 
Thank you very much. Mashimbe, listen on. I'll have him answer that question just now. I want to go to Brenda first. Brenda, welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Andile. Thank you so much. Hello to Baba in the studio and to the Metro listeners. Brenda, tell me, were you you at the July? No, I was not. But, you know, I was driving now and I hear this uh, fascinating conversation and I'm like, I'm phoning in. You know, Andile, it has always been my dream to own a horse. But I had no idea what is the the cost like. Mm. I never made a, 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 a research about it, but I've always said I wish to have a horse and a dolphin. So when I had this conversation about <laughs> horses, I'm like, wow, this is great. Hey, Are you a dolphin? <laughs> a dolphin. I want to have a big swimming pool and put a dolphin inside. I don't have money, but one day, watch this thing. Brenda, it, like, oh. I love your dreams. I love your dreams. <laughs> so this thing is fascinated me. I heard the topic and I'm like, this is great. And thank you, Baba, for the lesson that we learned today. For me, it was like you were listening to my to my mind that somebody out there wants to have a horse. So now you have planted a seed. I'm going to I'm going to do whatever it takes to get my horse, you know. <laughs> when you own that horse, let us know. I want you in the studio. And please, I I'll, can there. I please be the one that names it? Please. <laughs> That's all I want. I want to name it. That's it. Brenda, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brenda, all the way out in Pretoria. Let's play some of your voice notes as well. Um, You know, every now and then we do things that are unbecoming of a sports show. We go and we get a man to tell us about horses in South Africa. So many of us enjoy the events in and around horses and we celebrate those events. But what about the other side of it? And that's what today's conversation was about. The first black man to run the Durban July. Evening, Miss Andy Elias, Pashan Dusanj from Dival. What a guest you have in the studio. Congratulations to him in his career in horse racing. Yeah, just out of curiosity, I, I, for starters, I would like to ask him a question that uh, overall, uh, what, what, what steps one needs to take to venture in horse racing? Yeah, talking about uh, being having horses for 15 20000 is, is something that uh, i think average people can can can, can venture into big up your show thank you so much uh, i want you to answer the first question does as yes, i think i've just explained to you Hori, per every win or second or third or fourth or fifth a jockey gets 10% of that money ah why should we hold a horse i'll make an example First price on a July in the cap is 2.8 million. The Matsunya and a court 10% of that is 280,000. So why hold it? Why hold it? It doesn't make sense. You're spiting yourself. You, ru- you run second, maybe it's 1.2 or 800,000. You've got 80,000, and so what? Why should you hold it? If I lento and I could be no fundisi. Why, why does it have to be umfundis? I want umfundis. I want to be a little bit of 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 a I'm okay, how are you, man? The Very first well, black you. man. Looking rather debonair. He looks so amazing. Man. To run at the July. So when undressed. people are partying, this man is uh, alongside those sitting in owner's boxes. Right. So he makes it, I mean, without them and the horses, there's no July, is there? He could very well be the reason why I may attend my first July next year. Please do. You Please know, I've, do. Never, I've never attended such. I don't think so either. Asam. No. It's a date next year. It's, it's, can we hear about the body guest? It's one of the best things you can ever attend. Really? All right. I'm telling you. But your perspective is different. You don't, you're not in the, you're yeah. sitting in a different place altogether. No, you are free to. to, to so why I gotta yeah. go kish kish? Everywhere. There's no place like July in the Cape, I'm telling you. Before we, you know, exit and leave the studio, what is it about you 
what you're doing, your life that you want South Africans that are listening right now. As you heard, you're inspiring people even now. What is it that you'd like them to know about you, about this industry? I think uh, I wasn't aware that uh, people are interested in horse racing. Because there's no information about it. So, yeah. you know, people don't share. I think what uh, I'll do, because uh, to be honest with you, I like a black man. Mm. I'm very jealous about a black man. Mm. What I think I will do, I'll buy a horse on the next sale. Mm-hmm. I think I'll have to get your numbers. Then mm-hmm. who's ever interested in horse racing can buy a share there. It's a deal. We'll make it happen. Brenda, I'm putting you up. Brenda that called just now, I'm putting you up in that deal and uh, we'll get it done with that boy. Yeah. Your generosity knows no ends. Thank you so much for walking the path and smoothening it for those that are going to come afterwards. Mm-hmm. You bear the thorns that are up front and we appreciate you for that. Congratulations once again on history being made. Thank you. I appreciate it. You heard it here. So please guys, reach out and let's get this done. Let's get you started on your journey. I'm Andy Lengube. My entire team, including the lights, camera, action guys, uh, as well as, of course, those that control and make sure that the show happens. Thank you so much. Pela, pela. That's all me.